and howdy, howdy, howdy. It's King Lake 86, and I am here with the Panzer Marmot, also known as Tank Ferret. Hail, all you magnificent bastards out there in TV land. You bastards. You bastards. All of you bastards. You magnificent bastards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do we got going on, dude? What's up? Oh man, we are uh, we we are we are chilling like villains. We are um um uh, I don't know um we're not nervous in the service. That's for certain. Uh, <laughs> little fifth element re reference there for you. Right? Man, I don't know, dude. I don't know. Uh, I, I just I'm, I'm out of free stream yard time. And uh, thank you, King Leak, for providing a platform. Uh, we're going to get some people over here. I shared this out on Twitter. I hope everybody else does that out there in King Lake. We got Lord Sandwich defending flavor for all of us. Yeah. Gotta love it. You better yes. have me a good fucking Reuben. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Not, not, Lord not Sandwich. that nasty ass fucking California Reuben where they use coleslaw instead, fucking assholes. Dude, I never got that. I'm like, why, man? Why you gotta overcomplicate a Reuben? It's a Reuben. Like you don't mess with the Hollywood. And, you know, a Hollywood's basically a filet mignon sandwich, and it's delicious. Although some places do, like they serve it ground filet mignon. I'm like, dude, why would you grind filet mignon? Like, what, 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 what made that okay? Fucking, what is the fucking? Pr it's Tender enough as it is. What the fuck? Yeah, for real. For real. And I forget exactly how a Hollywood is made, but I know that it's real simple. Like, it's it's rye, a little bit of salad. I think it's just like, I think it's just a lettuce and a, some pickle and, and, and mayo. Uh, you know, a seasoned mayonnaise. You want to use a seasoned mayonnaise, not plain mayo for a yeah. proper Hollywood. Um. But Daily Grill out in Los Angeles, dude, man, the one in Burbank that's right next to the Burbank Airport, uh, dude, that it's so good. I, I don't care that it's like a twenty dollars sandwich meal. Uh, it's it's delicious and it belongs in my mouth. There's this uh, one place I used to work at, you know, and you know this was a building that how that house like 30 uh 3000 workers but we had a chef and he made some great fucking food and when i was working there you know he made you know he made rubens which i think it was like an every thursday type deal but he also had these california rubens which i tried i was like what the fuck is, what the fuck's a california ruben why is there coleslaw on my fucking sandwich <laughs> yeah, dude, coleslaw goes on the side, man. I, I mean, coleslaw and a Reuben is good, but, you know, keep them separated. Gotta keep it separated. <laughs> That's where my mind went, too. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, well, me, actually, I kind of modify mine because if I make my own Reubens, I don't use corned beef. I use uh, pastrami. Oh, for real. Mm, yum. Man, it's, it's fucking great. All right, so I make my Rubens. I use marble rye. Yeah. I slap, yep. I slap pastrami on there. Then, of course, you have the, the Swiss and the coleslaw. But um, I also throw on Dijon mustard. Yes. And it, 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 it's just like the perfect mix of sour and tangy with the, with the sauerkraut. Oh. Delicious. Delicious. Yeah, see. I didn't mean co coleslaw. I meant sauerkraut. Did I say sauerkraut? Whatever. Yeah, you said sauerkraut. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I think we were all thinking coleslaw. Um, oh, let's see here. Oh, sorry. I had a message. And I was like, uh, uh, I was like, oh, what's going on here? Never mind. Um, I was distracted. I was distracted. I'm gonna draw some neon revenant, man. That sounds fine to me. 
hell yes uh dude i mean dude you've got like such a dynamic lineup with those with those developmental pictures and stuff ari and uh and uh jeff last uh jeff uh lastly is that yeah. his name yeah yeah dude i have one of his art books and i love it i absolutely love it um i love his art it's it's just he's got his own you know unique kind of feel man his own unique oh. way of uh I like it. I like his artwork because it has so much of a pulp feel to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, dude. I've already told it had a pulp feel like you uh, like you'd be looking at uh, Frank Frazetta's artwork and whatnot. It's unique but epic at this. I don't know. It's hard to explain. It, you, it was. It's something that you'd expect to see from like books back in back in the day, like from the fifties and sixties and whatnot that, that's why i, I love uh Lasley's, uh artwork hell yeah yeah no dude i yeah no for real uh it, it is something like like you'd pick up like in uh, in the underground you know mm -hmm. and I, I i absolutely love it um uh, i'm just kind of having a little fun here i'm gonna draw with the side of my pencil I'm a rebel. Uh, <laughs> uh, I need to get back to drawing. I'm, th I'm thinking about uh, making up a quick little art piece and uh, putting it in uh, Red Valkyrie's uh, auction. Their next one. Oh hell yeah, dude! I need to get I need to get in a hold of her, man. She, I, I, I've had kind of an invite to go over there, and I keep forgetting, man. Um. You know, I, I don't like to I I impose on folks. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, but uh, <laughs> nowadays, I, I could. Uh, I, I really need to uh, get out there and, and advertise and whatnot. I've got. Uh, I'm talking with uh, Chris Brown of Slaughterville. Yeah. About doing something for him. Um. He really liked that succubus. I still got to mail that sucker out. Unfortunately, my um, PayPal froze my account. Yeah, those fucking bastards. No, dude, like, this is the second time they've done that in, like, three months. And they're citing that, uh, you know, basically I'm making too much money. And it's like, dude, dude. Like, come on now. Is that what they're doing with uh, Eric July? Is that what they're claiming with him? Because I yeah, they're, no, they're and still holding like one point three million of his uh, money or something like that. Yeah, dude. Last I saw, it was up to one point five. But you know what, Eric July, props to him, man, because he's 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 fulfilling regardless. Like he's he's a smart businessman. He knows he's going to get that money. Uh. You know, and uh, so uh, yeah, uh, uh, he's up to three point four million dollars. Yeah, no, I'm gonna angle that arm out a little more. Sometimes, you know, I just kind of get in, get in there, kind of loosey goosey, and uh, just kind of like noodle it out a little bit. Uh, I'll have her wrists bent back. I just get, I just get funky with it. Can anybody actually see that? A little bit. I, I got uh, private potato brand potato cam going on right now. Uh, yeah. I, I do. I have a bad case of potato camera. It's okay. They'll do just fine. It'll be all right. Oh, man, dude. Dean, man, speaking of Aussies, Dean, comics mate, man, he's been killing it, dude. Talk about somebody who's leveled up. 
like uh, the uh, the embrace was good. I mean, the art was was good, but like what he's knocking out for the for the next for this next round of Aerolith, dude, that stuff is hype looking. Oh yeah. And oh, so I, I, did, did you see the cover page or the uh, cover for uh, Frog G? Uh, no, no. Did he do one for Frog G? Uh, no, it was done by Jason. Is that Unhinged? And, yeah, Unhinged, and uh, Ink, I think Ink Spots is working on it, too. Oh, dude. Oh, I can't wait to see it. I, I, I It's something that uh, I, I, I've missed, man, because I, I love that stuff, dude. Uh, let's see here. Let's um, what kind of belt does she wear, do, or does she wear a belt? Are these sweats, jeans, cargo shorts? What what she got on? Uh, tactical pants. Tactical pants. Okay, so with the cargo pocket on the side. He got to carry that All extra right. ammo. Right. At least starting now. Yeah, at the beginning of the story, she doesn't have her emblem yet, so. Yeah, yeah, no, and uh, as I've noticed, she uh, she takes quite the beating, and her uh, her clothes don't fare so well, uh, which is good for the audience. Yeah. Although sometimes when I look at her, I can't help but think of uh, of, of Brody going, "Your mama's so strong." <laughs> <laughs> when she breastfeeds, it's. It's protein shake. <laughs> yeah, I can just come in here, start doing some lines. She, give me a moment. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it. Where's that? Where's that? And Where's I, that? I love, I love this, dude. I explained to people, I'm like, yeah, dude. Like before she got superpowers, I was explaining to some folks in Chicago, uh, showing off some of the pictures, right? And I was like, before she got superpowers, like she was a, a competitive, uh, uh, she was a competitive uh, uh, weightlifter. And uh, they're like, oh, dude, that's like legit. You know, they're like, it's so rare that you actually get a superhero that's like physically active before uh, they become a superhero. You know, because you, you, know, you look at Peter Parker, the guy was like, he was a skinny dweeb. And you look at the Fantastic Four, and like, really, the only guy who had any physicality to him was uh, was 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 Ben Grimm, um, and, and maybe Johnny Storm a little bit, but uh, you know. Hey, there you go. Hold on, you sharing? You sharing? You sharing? Oh, dude! Yes. Holy cow. No, I had not seen that yet. Dude, I love it so much. Oh, man. I am so happy to see our, uh, our, our Mighty Wrench get a uh, get a comic based off of uh, based off of his internet persona. Like, yeah, that right? is that's so much fun, man. I love that. And Frog G's way cool, man. That that guy, he's like he he is all sorts of like, dude, he's he's got your projects back. He you know, like if he even if he's not backing, which he often does, like he backs a ton of projects. A lot of people yeah. don't realize that. Man, there's so but, many uh, projects I wish I could back. It's just I don't have the money for it. I unfortunately I do have to be picky about it. Oh, for real, for real. No, that's uh, that's that's definitely something. You know, like, all right. So she's got good forearms. She's got good muscle definition. We're just kind of, kind of mm -hmm. loosey goosey. She's got the part. It's largely on one side. So we're gonna... go ahead and throw on the wedding band. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, do you have a detailed sketch of that or do we need to design that? 
Uh, we might need to dis- design that, but then again, might just leave it as just a plain Jane band. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. That works. And that plays in with the characters, like color theme too. You know, it's really funny. You know, uh, here, here's a little, little fun tidbit, uh, a tank for fact, um, that I learned how to draw somebody holding a gun in their hand um, by uh, Gil Kane and Murphy Anderson. Hmm. Yep. They, uh, that, uh, I always, uh, I, I always kind of geeked out on that a little bit. Um, it's hard not to. Um, of course, at the time I was taught, I didn't realize just how big these guys were. I just thought they were, uh, I just thought they were my uncle's buddies. You know, he always played it down. I'm like, oh, no, no, these are my, these are my friends. Um, yeah, no, no, they're, 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 they're icons is what they are. Come on, Julie, just stop downplaying it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see here. That that arm's a little too beefy. There we go. That's that's better. And we're gonna thin it out at the joints. Uh, see, that's a wrong side of that. So now with women, their biceps develop less than guys do, but their triceps actually, like even with guys, you know, that's like the majority of like the mass, the bulk of the arm is the tricep. Yeah. Right? It drives me nuts in comics because all the guys have like like you know like the way they they, they draw like guys arms right is they'll, oh. they'll 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 what's up no i was going to say yeah uh, i think i know what you're getting at where they'll have like yeah. the massive fucking biceps but they get barely got shit for triceps yeah like you know like this is this is this is how You know they'll they'll draw. You know a, a guy's arm, and the reality, and you know I hate to name drop, but the guy who showed me how to draw arms was Norm Brayfogel. Uh, uh, you know, and it's like, yeah, now the bicep comes right there. Then you got this little muscle that runs around the front, and then you got like the the tricep. That's like most of the action. So when you're looking at, at say when the arm is up, right? You got like that bicep crock or break right there. And then it's like, boom, triceps. I think right. one of the masters Which, of being able to draw like raw muscle and get the proportions right. And of course I'm always going to say this. He's like one of, he's like one of my favorite top tier artists and that's uh Alex Ross. Oh dude, yes. Yeah, now that guy's anatomy is so beautifully spot on. Uh you know, and like most but most comic guys they'll draw the the arm like this, like big bicep, tiny tricep, you know, and it, it, I don't know. I don't need, I don't even think it looks cool to be honest. It just looks kind of clownish. Looks weird. I mean, hell, you yeah. know, I mean, I have this uh, picture I have brought up right here. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. That's gorgeous. See, look at that, dude. I, I love that. That's a story in a picture right there, man. Like Alex Ross, dude, a cut above, a definitely a cut above. Man, there's been there's been times where I could have bought his original like original pieces that he painted, but that were not prints. But you look at the price, you're like, fuck, I can't afford that. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, I, I've got a uh, uh, legendary uh, fantasy and sci-fi illustrator and painter. Um, what the heck? Oh, my screen turned on. Oh, cool. 
<laughs> acting like a little bit of a light. Oh, I'm gonna move this down a little bit. Yeah. Um, Excuse me. Uh, I, I, I second that. And then let's see here. We've got the piping. And, and she's got kind of a rounded face. You know, she's very, uh, very Celtic. Very, she got very yeah, kind of like, more. She, well, I don't know. I'd say more of a Slavic look. Yeah, she's kind of got an apple face. You know what I'm saying? Um, kind of like that 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 North Celt. Slavic. Well, it, well, that, she enough. is she is Slavic, so. <laughs> yeah. But and she's got. She has small, well-defined lips. And that. Uh, uh, there. Um, there's this uh, YouTube channel called uh, that I watch. It's cool. It's a uh, very, it's a very fun, uh, very funny little animated series called uh, Metal Family. Okay. And I mean, if I could, I'd show it on here. But friggin', uh, you know, it's just this, uh, this uh, one Russian person. They're doing, they do their own like little animation. Is like deals with this he heavy metal family. But it's funny because how it started out is just like a little music video where it's following this character named Glam. And he's like in the glam, glam rock, glam metal. <laughs> All right. So he's being hit on by this chick and he looks out the window at the restaurant, at the restaurant that he, or at the diner that he's sitting at, sees this motorcycle pu pull up and there's this uh, buff lady out there on the motorcycle. And he just absolutely falls in love with her, sees that she actually drops her keys and she drives <laughs> off. You know. And basically, uh -huh. he's chasing her down, trying to get her keys back to her. But she's just like, "Oh my god, this guy's just a creep." Because you know, he he always has a smile on his face. He has a very pleasant look on his face, so it's kind of unsettling, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I can't remember the name. I can't remember what song it's playing. That this is that's being that it's that is playing to this uh, to this uh, little video, but. He and again, he's like chasing her down to like the ends of the earth and all that kind of stuff. And until finally, there's an accident where they both end up in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And he finally holds out the keys for to her. She's like, "Oh, that's all you were trying to do?" And he was like, "Yeah." But then they start hanging out and all that. And then eventually, they end up getting married and they have kids of their own. But like the entire show. After that first episode, it's just fucking hilarious because she's like a hardcore biker. And the first <laughs> the first episode is the first full real episode is when uh, show it's one of her kids in class, and the teacher's just fucking with with the kid hardcore because he's wearing a Slipknot shirt, and you know it just doesn't doesn't like the way he dresses. So mm -hmm. he tells his dad. His dad goes in. And basically the mother or the teacher just berates him. You know, oh, your son's a low life and blah, 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 blah. I can't believe you're coming. You go to the school and, you know, he just takes it on the chin and he's just like, okay. You know, he says his piece and leaves, but then mm -hmm. she starts berating the son, the son again, but this time he tells his mom and, uh oh, and she's like, oh, well, I guess I finally get to beat your mother and all that. And then all of a sudden you just see a motorcycle pull up and a battle axe fucking drop. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and it it's freaking hilarious. And it, uh, it's, just, it's just a great little show. Uh, I think they just now started dubbing it in English. So there's only a few few English episodes out there. Oh, Okay. Dude, I gotta check this out, man. I gotta check this out. I gotta check that out. Here we go. I'm getting, we're getting to something recognizable here. What do you think so far, man? Oh, I'm liking it. 
little bit of action. That eh, gun's a little small. That's okay. See, digitally, I would just grab the gun and size it up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's why pencils exist. Yep. Front sight post, little rear sight post, a little bit of safety right there. Yeah. Right there. Safety goes right there. And then. Do you have the hammer? That's right. Drop the hammer. Yeah, there we go. Get a little straining. Define that wrist bone there. I'm just kind of messing around a little bit. Just having some fun, man. You know, you remember fun? Oh, yeah. Something that we're not allowed to have anymore. That's right. Not allowed to have fun anymore because it's, it's all histophobic. Yep. And uh, I'm kind of tired of that. <laughs> all the stupid shit now. Oh, jumping up and down with joy is a sign of weight. What the fuck is wrong with these people? Oh, dude, they, they're, they're, it, well, the thing is, is that they, they listen to 4chan and take it seriously, you know? Oh, God. I, I have a meme I got to share. Uh, oh, I do like a good meme. Give me a moment. Give me a moment. Uh, let's see. I gotta send this to myself off my phone. Not a whole lot of definition on the inside of the arms because it's just like it's just a big muscle. There, there we go. go. That will help. And this is, I, I've been trying to commit to memory the, uh, the details of this character. Uh -huh. So I am drawing this entirely without reference right now. So if Something I get some things wrong, <clears throat> get a little shading action going on there. There we go. And this is going to be slightly spicy, but this is my channel. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> there we go. There we go. We got some neon revenant action going on here. That's what I'm talking about. And there you go. Spicy. We like spicy. Oh, dude. Dude, oh my goodness! I I heard, I heard about that. See, up until Chris Chan, you know, did what they did. Um, I, I was actually kind of in Chris Chan's corner because I'm like, dude, I, I, I admire anybody who's willing to put it out there and do what they want. I don't care if it's fan fiction or something like that. Just express yourself, have fun, you know, and and do what you can. And because they're their special needs, you know, I, I always took it easy on them, dude. I, I don't, I don't pick on the special kid. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, but after it came out, what they did. Yeah, no gloves off, bro. Gloves. The F off. Um, that was, that was pretty messed up. Yeah. Yeah. It's especially with some of the other stuff that they, uh, they, they say, oh, that's right, that, that, the button's underneath the flap for usually for those pants. And we're going to kind of wrinkle it up in there. Oh, shit, I still need to bring that model kit over here. Put some loops on that, add a little extra curve. There we go. Not bad for a quick sketch, not bad. Let me see, get that lined up so people can see. There we go. See? And that's what I need to do. I need to practice expediting this and getting good pencils down so that I can ink on those pencils. 
Of course, I've got a wobbly ass set of boxes that I'm drawing on right now. <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. I, I don't have a real table for this. Um, <laughs> But rough and loose, rough and loose. That ah, shit. That's not how you want to do it. <laughs> right? There we go. All right. Now I got some shading in on that. Hmm. All right. Could you see yourself here? Uh, yes. Yes, All indeed. Right. So, Brett, can you see my arrow? Uh, nope. Okay, never mind then. Stop screen. Okay. What do I need to fix? Um, I was just going to say the scar going along underneath her cheekbone. Oh, okay, yeah. And then um, uh, that yeah, that's on the uh, left or right side uh, of her face. The side that's facing us. Okay. And uh, it's it's horizontal. I don't know if I've noticed that in any of the reference picks. Um, except maybe that one that... Uh... All right, so imagine, like, literally, it would be a scar that is following the contour of, like, underneath the cheekbone. Like something oh, okay. kind of dug up under there, kind of. So, like, right about this area, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I can, yeah, see what I got going on here. Um, we are going to do a little bit more penciling on this. Just to kind of shade things in, kind of comic book way. Let's get that elbow actually defined there she actually has elbows like i always tell people man i'm like dude don't neglect the elbows and knees don't neglect them they're they're funky looking uh and if you draw them all smooth then they're going to be then they look funky but if you draw them right which is funky uh they look fine yeah dude i can't get this table stop with it it's here i'll show you what i'm working with it's just a couple of boxes <laughs> <laughs> I'm using potato cam and I'm on boxes. It's like, man, what is this, 2018? Yeah, to, to, just for reference, 2018 was, was a pretty rough, rough year. <laughs> that yeah. was, uh, that was, uh, that was the year, well, 2017. Late, I, what was it? I'm trying to remember. It's been so long. Um, well, I think it was like 2017 is when I got glass walled, and, which is canceling without giving you the courtesy of telling you you've been canceled or putting you on blast. They they basically just ignore you, um, which is kind of shitty, you know, like a bit of a disservice. Let's see if I can get this whole picture in on that. I might have to turn that sideways. Anyway. No, it's not much to see, but uh, yep, and of course, you know, penciling. This is why I wear gloves. This is why I wear gloves, but I'm out of gloves. I get a penciler's hand where it's all black and shiny and un unreal. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh man oh man oh man oh yo it's trusty sidekick out in the audience what's up trust arena the trusty yo, what's one up? trusty sidekick man that guy's that guy's a great guy dude he's yeah people should go hit him up on the twitters and go get a commission from him which reminds me trusty i need to i need to talk to you i'm, I'm starting to line some folks up uh, out there, uh, I got uh, Don Draw stuff today, 
lined up. Uh, we're going to be coming right. back to that. Hey, if you want to take a gander real quick. Okay, I see it now. Yes, Ari's sketch right there. It's okay, cool. Uh, and then there's also the one on... Uh, the one on... Actually, that's supposed to be upper lip, not lower lip. Oh, well, it's all good. <laughs> upper lip? Oh, yeah, that's right. Right there, right? Yeah, where she took a punch in the face. No, I love it. I absolutely love it. All right. Let's uh, warm up. Let's warm up the inks. Got to warm up the inks before you get started, you know? Um, I, I, I love uh, Jimmy Reyes. He's got this inking course on Gumroad. And uh, I, I highly, highly recommend that uh, that that people just gotta go take a look at it. Um, one, I mean, dude, it, it comes with a bunch of uh, brushes for Eclipse Studio, which that alone is worth the price tag. I think he finally took my advice and raised the price on it. Uh, cause I was like, bro, bro, you are, you are under charging. It's like, you know, it says, oh yeah, it comes with like, you know, five hours of, uh, of inking, you know, tutorials, tips, tricks, and, and, the, and the like. And, um, like, honestly, dude, with this as jam packed as he has the information when I did it, uh, I had to. Uh, I had to stop it and rewind it because like he covers stuff so fast in there that, uh, that honestly it's, it's a full, like it took me like two weeks to get through that five hour video, uh, to do all the exercises and everything that he lays out. Like he really packed the value in on that. Um, I, I can't recommend it enough, dude. Uh, Jimmy Reyes, uh, that guy is awesome, and I can't wait for uh, for Dragon Rage, dude. Like that book looks so dope, dude. I mean, this is like we're talking about David Finch's go-to inker, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's like, dude, it's David flipping Finch, man. Oh, warming up the inks, warming up the inks. All right, I think, let's see here. That's right, that's right. I, th I think I have your number somewhere. I had to get a new phone. Um, so, but I, I, I know I've got, I know I've got contact info, info for you somewhere. But I'm getting stuff priced out because I've got to get this stuff. Um, i got to get all this stuff squared away. Now I'm going to turn off my camera for a second because I want to feed my nicotine habit um and uh but uh i gotta get this stuff priced out for a potential project investor um and uh uh so that way i, I can get things like noodled and whatnot because i've got like Vic king dawn of don draw stuff I've got uh, Jim O'Reilly, um, and I would love to have a trusty sidekick uh, pick as well. And hold on one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute myself as I go traveling through the house. All right. All right. I have made it successfully through the house. I was not eaten by wildebeests. 
gobbledygooks or uh, or gremlins or the like. I I have survived. I am alive. Uh, make sure everybody out there in TV land, you go share this out on uh, on on your favorite social media. Let's get some people in here to uh, subscribe, smash the like button, hit that bell to receive all notifications because that is the greatest boost to an algorithm that you can give to your favorite small time channel uh is, is hitting, hitting that bell dude D tickle them bells uh tickle dingle them. that bell dingle that's right dingle, dingle dingle that bell that's right that's what frog g says he says dingle the bells but make sure make sure you make sure you fondle it well yes yes play with it a little <laughs> we'll talk about the first thing that comes up <laughs> oh, shit. oh man yeah no i'm so stoked to be working on this project because i've loved it from the beginning um you know especially with the whole she hulk debacle of when they they like dude like um uh the, the artist and i we had a falling out um because she went super woke and uh, but Megan Hetrick, you know, she she actually did it right. Well, mostly right. Um, she still looked like, you know, a, 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 a male testosterone fueled She-Hulk. And I was like, no, that's not like women can get bulky, but that's not how they look, you know, when they're big and bulky and strong and with lot, lots of muscle and stuff like that. And like. Like, that's not the proportions. That's not how the muscle develops. That's not how the body develops or anything right. of the sort. And, Unless you know, they're doing some fucked up steroids. Well, yeah, no, just ask that dude who competed as a woman in the East German, uh, from, uh, as an East German Olympian. Um, and they, 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 shoved, they shoved them full of so many hormones that eventually they just said, dude, just, just give me a penis and make it official. I, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I am a dude. Uh, and, uh, so uh, they were obliged, <laughs> you know, I was like, dude, because them, them East German power lifters from the 1980s, them with some scary dudes, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and much like Vader's more machine than man. <laughs> I will break you. Okay, Hilda. <laughs> you shall call me Freulein. We will go on date. I'm on top and in back. <laughs> Wait, uh, what? <laughs> Do you no, Amerikanski know the term <laughs> prone bone? <laughs> 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 this is the bad uh, snooze too. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is the bad. We want good snooze now. Uh, yeah, no, dude. I, 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 but uh, you know, like uh, there have been some good, some good, good illustrations. But it's like I don't know. Most people, I feel like they get it wrong. Like I, I always felt that she Hulk. Yeah, she, she would she would look a little better if she had a little more meat on her bones. Like I love John, um, Byrne, Brian, whatever you want to say, John Byrne. his name, burn. Yeah. Uh, I, I love his she Hulk and I grew up on that. Right. Especially since, you know, he was the artist for most of the time that I was reading fantastic four. Uh, and you know, that, that, that dynamic changed all the time. Uh, and sometimes it was fine. Fantastic five with Spidey. Um, but uh, uh bombastic bag man. I always thought that like she was a little skinny. You know, like she didn't she didn't like I was like, come on now. Like you can go watch the Miss the, the Miss uh all natural uh, you know, the Miss uh the Miss Natural competitions, right? And you can see natural bodybuilders and body sculptors and stuff like that out there that uh actually still have their tatas. Um you know, because they haven't been hormoned away. <laughs> and uh and they don't like you know they, they, they don't look anything crazy then you can look at some of these like uh these instagram fitness models right 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of these women are just like, I'm like, holy smokes. Uh, I mean, like, I, I didn't, I didn't know that that big, strong women could actually look that good in a dress. Uh, because often in the past I had seen, and I, I like that, 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 that move towards femininity, uh, amongst, uh, female body sculptors, um, like keeping a feminine, uh, cause he got real, real manly there for oh, a yeah. while. A lot of, a lot of hormones rolling around. Uh, and you can tell which ones do because, uh, dude, they got a jaw I'm jealous of. Like, shit, I wish I had a chiseled jaw like that. <laughs> yeah, right. I'd have another six kids. <laughs> yeah, for real, though. But I like this opportunity. I mean, like, I, I like I like a variety. And I, I, one day, I want to do a lineup of all the comic skate, like, badass, like, superheroes. All the way from, like, supermodel gem shock to uh beefcake uh uh neon revenant you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like oh. and just be like hey look look what we got that you don't have we have real women of all types like dude i love magna uh from john from beyond uh the guy uh, created black tiger uh, another great female character right there uh magna she's a farm girl you know, she she's thick. Uh, and you can't tell her figure because she's always wearing them coveralls. But in some of them shots, she ain't wearing them coveralls. And I'll tell you right now, she's thick. Extra thick. Uh, <laughs> right. Hey, man, who knows? Maybe we'd, we can get, end up in the CG vacation, too. <laughs> right? Yeah, fuck that. No, we're going to do our own vacation with Blackjack. And and, and Chippendales dancers. Uh, Wait, what? This is for the ladies. <laughs> the Chippendales dancers. It's for the ladies. Uh, oh, uh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I would actually love to be a part of the uh, the CG vacation. But you know what we got to do? Publish. That's what yep. we got to do. Uh, these guys are. Their eye. Like, dude. I have no doubt that their eyes are upon us. Um. And that's because I I might use a little bit of nefarious needs means to see who's stalking me uh online um and uh well not so nefarious but uh, it's not conventional you know what i mean um but you know go take a look and, and and see who's who's looking and who's paying attention and whatnot and those guys at the top they're paying attention to us guys down here in the slums you know, their 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 eyes are on it, and uh, what they want to see is product. Uh, they they want to see us producing, um, and we got it, we got it. So, and I think what Neon Revenant, you're you're thinking uh, summer next year? Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's great. Well, I talked with. Uh... Well, actually, I don't know. Well, I'll talk to you about it behind the scenes. You, you talked with insert name drop. Uh, don't worry about name drop. We just we'll just say insert name drop. Yeah, and we're thinking uh, thinking about uh, running a little mini launch party on July third and launch at midnight on July fourth. Oh, oh, hell yeah! I mean, dude, then, she's a that fits the character perfectly. She's she's a she's a military vet. You know, I mean, how much more Americana do you want? Exactly. And on top of that, I believe you brought this up. Like possibly the first twenty four hours, there will be a discount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run a run an run a, a early backer. I, I love that, and I, I see it, it. It works out successfully for a lot of campaigns where. Um, they, they, they discount it and because it's discounted, people buy heavier. Um, and it really helps get the, uh, it gets the number of backers, that number up. 
because yeah, yeah, you want to make cash, you want to make money, right? Because you're trying to fund something, you're trying to build something here, and it takes capital in order to build that. You know, that's the part that I, I don't know why people don't like to talk about that, but like, it's like, dude, uh, I was talking about that with Homeboy from Silverline Comics, and uh, but uh, yeah, I know you want to get that, you want to get that backer number up as well, because uh, you know that's that's. That shows like, hey, look, here, here's a number of people that um, that have, have bought into this. And then and if you if you do the math on it, on those like, you know, so a lot of these guys, they run like a 20 percent off, like first 24 hours uh, kind of deal. Right. Right. And it's like, yeah. So they went from making an average of. Uh, fifty dollars to an average of forty dollars. Oh no, not that. Uh, and the you know the prop most of that comes straight out of the profit margin. So the profit margin is like obliterated on that first twenty four hours. Like there's not a whole lot of uh, uh, of extra capital that goes into it because you know you got to play the finance games where uh, you're making sure that. When you're when you're when you're charging for the product that you got enough for the overprints because you got to get overprints mm -hmm. um, because books come damaged, yep. books come with misprints. This is just reality. Uh, like uh, Coach says, man, you know you you want to order about twenty five percent more, twenty to twenty five percent more. And I'm like, yeah, that's about right. I would say about you know between a fifth and a third extra, somewhere in that area. Between a fifth and a third of your of your of your ordered print run, and plus you want to have copies on hand afterwards. The idea is to, you know, build up a base. I mean, if, if you're doing retail copies, if you're doing exclusive, you know, this 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 issue right here is just for the crowdfunder. We're going to do retail separate. Uh, then yeah, then you just you destroy the the rest once 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 your copies have gone out to your backers, destroy them. Uh, that's always my advice. It's like, dude, it, it sucks for you, but that endears you to collectors because now their copies just became that much more valuable. Right. And, and, and sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, there's also, there will be a variant cover and that's going Ooh. to be done by the awesome Reedy. Um, Ooh. And that's going to be a very limited run. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Oh, dude. Renee is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, dude, I, 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 love, I love that stuff. Holy smokes. That is like right by my house. Hold on. I think there's a fire going on up the street from my house. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, I got to run out to the street. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, thought you, I thought you were out of California. You weren't dealing with that wildfire bullshit anymore. <laughs> right? Oh, no. No, oh, no. It was just the lights bouncing, uh, bouncing around. still there yeah can you hear me yeah yeah okay um it's because i skipped i jumped from wi-fi to to my cell phone uh okay. service um i was talking to a buddy about the expenses right regarding the household <laughs> i was like i was like dude hello like, I lived in the middle of nowhere, and uh, hey, you're going to have this, to start this that house over again. in total costs less than what less than two years of rent in Los Angeles. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh fuck. Now, granted, fuck it's a real fixer upper. I, I've got basement jacks. Uh, I, I've got foundation jacks down in the basement, and I've got to replace those with uh, with some heavy duty beams, which uh. I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do with those is that I'm going to, uh, 
uh, put some uh, six by eights with some U brackets and uh, I'm going to steel collar them to the foundation with like some two foot foundation bolts. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and just reinforce that. And then I don't have to worry about any of that. The rest of this house is pretty decent. I mean, it's over a hundred years old, this house, but, and I've got to replace like all the window frames, all the window frames and the windows have to be replaced. They're Victorian. And somebody told me what the term is, but I totally forgot. And I should know this term considering I grew up doing construction, but, uh, they, there's, I got to tear open the walls because, you know, this is a Victorian era house. So they've got the counterweights inside the walls for the oh, windows. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Now, granted, I got to pull them out for two. I got to open it up for two reasons. One, uh, they're lead and they're oxidizing, and I don't want that in the house, right? I believe they're. I, I don't want I lead oxide in the house. I think they're called um, uh, ballast windows. It's plumb stupid. Uh, yeah, um, but uh, two, uh, dude having neutral weighted windows where the infrastructure is already there, it just needs to be replaced and or repaired. Uh, yes, please. Uh, I have little kids and already we've had some fingers smashed with them messing around with the windows. Uh, <laughs> little turds. And it's like, I told them, I told them, I was like, look, I don't want you to learn the hard way. Like I did when I was a kid, they still learned the hard way. I'm like, oh, thank goodness there's no broken bones. Because <laughs> those windows are, windows are brutal. Yeah. Because they're heavy. Uh, a lot of the glass, because uh, we had a window break, and I took a look at it, and I was like, holy cow, this is original. This is original glass. So a lot of the, the windows are, are original glass. They're over 100 years old, uh, which Shit. is kind of neat. Kind of neat. Uh, uh, yeah, I think those. Type and I've got of, a nice uh, little piece of property here. It's it's good. It's something generational, you know. Yeah, because I, I got a uh, couple of special needs kids, and eventually I'm gonna have to put them up something on the property, you know. Right. But I right. got a we got a quarter acre, so it's it's not too small. It's got a gigantic lawn, which drives me crazy. Uh, cause I have a, uh, wimpy electric mower that, uh, some neighbors awesomely gave to me as they were moving out and they were moving into an apartment so they didn't need a lawnmower anymore. But, uh, dude, it, it takes like, it, it takes like a full, like eight full battery charges to get the whole yard. Like right. it's sizable. Which uh, kids love because when we lived in Los Angeles, like we, we couldn't, the kids really couldn't play outside um, because the, it was all spikes and thorns and rocks. And, and uh, we lived with, uh, shall we say, people who collected useless garbage. And so they made it unsafe. You know, they would just collect crap. Um. I don't want to use the term hoarders because it, it doesn't quite fit, but yeah, you're pushing an envelope over there. They're a pack rats. Saying, you know, and I was just like, dude, I, I, I got a play set in the backyard. I got to build a new play set for the kids. I can't wait to do that, but I got to get like, I got to get the finances up and get things rolling. Uh, short term commissions are open. Like uh, I, I've got like, Dude, I got, I got some, I got some, I got some great work in, but it's like, yeah, uh, short term, I've only got like, I'm only booked up for like a week and a half. Um, long term, though, over the next year, I, I'm booked for like, uh, geez, like good six to eight months worth of work, which is really nice. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get, uh, I'm doing a, a thing where I, I just like, I don't know, I want to do like tr trading cards for, for people's campaigns and stuff like that. Um, I, I've seen it boost 
the campaign. Um, I offered that for uh, Greg Levitt's gun demon, but we had a falling out. So I don't know what's going on with that, but I've told everybody, I was like, look, if you backed it, I don't care if he's refunded you, but if you backed that and you wanted a, a sketch card, hit me up. I got you. No cost. I, I'll, I'll knock it out and I'll send it to you as soon as I can afford to do so. As soon as I got that little extra cash where I can go, all right, instead of, you know, going out and getting a bottle of whiskey or something like that, I'm, I'm going to send out these, these sketch cards because it was like, no, dude, I did that to help the campaign. I got paid nothing for it. I wanted nothing for it. Um, unfortunately, I can't really do that for everybody. Um, I would love to, but my wife, yeah, um, I, I'd become a part of the foundation of the house. <laughs> <coughs> Chicago's only three hours away, and they're they're still looking for people, you know, from the 1960s. So I'm just right. gonna put that out there. <laughs> if you never hear from me again, know that I pissed off the wife. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> But uh, she knows where I sleep. <laughs> uh, That's funny. No, but for real though, um, and anything you want, uh, just I ask kindly. Even though I say anything you want, no big two, no, none of those. I do not enjoy drawing them, and when I do, you can tell I didn't enjoy drawing it. It's kind of soulless. I'd much prefer you pick something indie. Uh, heck, I don't care if you, you pick your own character and uh, want to use it for your campaign. At that point, congratulations. You gamed this system. Uh, you got one up on them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, right now, I'm like, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll knock out, you know, depending on the level of detail, between 15 and 100 bucks, uh, five zero and one zero zero, uh, depending on like, how crazy you want me to get you want detailed backgrounds or something like that is you know that it with tiny line art and lots of detail like rusty and boy robot um you know Fuck, then, i haven't seen that cartoon yeah in no, no that's, that'll take me a while um uh, but i've got i've got the i've got the materials to do it like right now and i can do quick turnaround on that anybody out there who wants that um you know, my, my short term stuff like is open. It's open. Um, I'm focused on uh, developing products and uh, getting the store ready so that we can launch 21 Demons. Paul Roper's 21 Demons. Dude, this is like 120 plus pages of just sick house. Like the guy was good when he started the book. And he's remastered it a couple of times already. And it's it's got to the point where it's like, dude enough just publish it it's good right uh let them see your true leveling on the next on the next iteration uh but like dude this guy leveled up while doing this book and i love to watch that stuff dude no i cannot hear you okay <laughs> no no i cannot hear you all right uh let's see I'm That's gonna, why I've just been kind of flapping my gums, making sure there's no dead air, just yakking, talking, blabbering. And while you're out there in TV land, make sure you smash that like button, hit the bell to receive all notifications, and share this out on your favorite social media, which is kind of like saying, like, hey, go sniff your favorite dog turd. I'm uh, going to kick you, then jump back in. Okay. Okay, let's see if we get this technical uh, difficulty handled. Can you hear me um, now? Yes. 
<laughs> well, uh, what I was saying, well, whatever the fuck happened there. Uh, what I was saying earlier, they're called uh, ballast windows. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, but there's another name for them. Hmm. And I forget what it is. It's an archaic term that we don't use anymore, but they used it at the time. Uh, double hung windows. No. Right. And I and when I was a young when I was a when I was a teenager, uh, and I first moved to Los Angeles, uh, I of course did um, a, a lot of handyman and carpentry and uh, and home remodeling and refinishing and stuff. And some of those buildings in Los Angeles, they have those. And so I learned all about that fun stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, you open up the, the wall here and then, you know, they, they chunk out the wall. And uh, and it's like, holy cow, there's a whole mechanism. We reattach it and all this other stuff and re refurbish it, put some new, uh, some new pulleys and other fun stuff on there. And, and boom, it's absolutely fantastic. And yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, is it cantilevered? Cantilevered, yes, that is it. Yes, it's, yeah, it's a term we don't use anymore, <laughs> unless I'm you're an engineer. Useless bullshit. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, uh, the home I grew up in when I used to live up in Pennsylvania, uh, like you said, it was like over. I can't remember how. So basically. If you were to go into the basement, you could see the original walls, and they still yeah. had uh, nineteen third like nineteen twenties uh, newspaper up for the insulation. Oh, dude! It was cool. Yeah, you see all see all like the little articles and what was being sold in these newspapers or advertised, like oh, these laced boots and all that for for the ladies and all that kind of shit. <laughs> No, it was older than that because it was uh, no, because it was pre -flap flapper era. I remember now. So, yeah, I think it may have been Victorian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, my, my my daughter ambushed me with a new hat. Um, as I was walking through the house. <laughs> I've been trying to talk her into uh, bringing back her comic. She had this one that was making fun of furries, but furries loved it and didn't realize they were being clowned on. And I was like, dude, that's brilliant. Um, <laughs> it's called Very Furry Tales. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, dude, uh, I keep I keep trying to tell her. I'm like, dude, you got to gotta bring that back. That, that, that stuff was funny. Um, with a little tiny gay chihuahua uh, who's just so over the top. Uh, absolutely great. So I'm going to oh. just kind of cut in on this with a Sharpie. Oh, yeah, it was Victorian era. Yeah, I'm looking at, like, the boots and stuff. And Yep, yep, yep. You know, one of the things I love about doing analog art is that there's no back button. There's no undo. There's no resizing. Uh, it's all It wrong. really is. Yeah, it really is controlled chaos. Uh, I, I love doing digital. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, like, something about... Something about that visceral kind of feel. Yeah. Bring that. Uh, that's what makes me sad about anime. Oh, dude, it's so sanitized now. Like, it's all like just like it's two or three different styles. Yeah, and it's all super clean. Like, yeah, we're are, like. It's all just purely defined lines. You don't have like the small, like the small little imperfections you would see, like with something that was that was done on cell animation. 
Right. Well, like, like, look at like Lone Wolf and Cub. You know, it's all done by by brush. You know, and I I absolutely loved it. Um, or look at Crying Freeman, um, another uh, old one, or even uh, Shiro Masamune's like early works, like uh, his, the early Ghost in the Shell, or um, Appleseed. Oh yeah. You know that that stuff. It's 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 real. It's real rough, um, and it's kind of sketchy. But then again, you know, like manga artists draw differently than we do uh, in in the West. Uh, they they're actually drawing at pretty much uh, scale. Right. Um, it's not exactly scale. It's still a little bit large, so it does get reduced, but it's much smaller, so you can actually get out more production. And that's uh, that's something, you know, you and I were talking about on the back end uh, regarding that. And we'll we'll do some tests and we'll see how it comes out. Um, like, uh, what was it there? Uh but me and my friend, we went to Anime Matsuri this year. Freaking oh, out. yeah. There was a guy who was selling uh, animation cells, like the real deal stuff. And there he had like He-Man, like original He-Man, original She-Ra. He had Vampire Hunter D. I was like, how the fuck did you get a hold of that? <laughs> oh, dude, that's way cool. That is way cool. Yeah, I, I, dude, uh, I, I have a friend who collects that kind of stuff. Um, and I, I, I love it. I, I absolutely love it. I have, I have another friend who uh, used to work in the industry. Well, he still does. He does voiceovers now. But he, uh, in his early career, uh, he actually started off as a character designer. Uh, he designed uh, a lot of the bad guys for Thundercats. He worked on Captain Planet and a bunch of other really uh, other stuff. I, I, you know, I don't know if I can call Captain Planet cool because he was all sorts of like, you know, nerdrific. Uh, hey man, I liked Captain Planet. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoyed him too, but he was he was a bit cringe. Uh, <laughs> At times, yeah, but one of the one of the episodes that always sticks out to me, you know, this was at like the fucking height of the drug war, of the anti-drug war. Um, oh yeah. The one episode that really sticks out it mainly because a person actually fucking died in that episode was uh what well, what's her uh the Russian chick though uh what was her Oh okay. Win? Yeah, um her brother it was either her brother or her cousin was addicted to this drug called Bliss. No fucking uh -huh. figure, you know. And he ends up getting her addicted to it. And so the team has to figure out how, you know, how to get her off of it and everything. And her brother ends up fucking ODing and dying. Holy so it, cow, that's heavy for Captain Planet, man. And like he ended up falling falling through a window and shit. His arms are fucking cut up and bleeding. You know? I was like it didn't fuck with me. It just stuck with me. I was, it, that was actually a really good episode for them to have. Yeah, yeah, no, dude. The actions have consequences, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just like, holy shit. <laughs> dude, that, that's brutal. Uh, quote Nathan Explosion, brutal. Yeah, absolutely brutal. That is brutal. Speaking of, I was playing fucking, I started playing, uh, doing my third run through Cyberpunk. Oh, yeah. And friggin', I decided to go Corpo. And nor normally I went, uh, I'd either do Street Kid or Nom Nomad. And right. uh, I, I went with chicks on both of those. I was like, you know what, with Corpo, I'm going to do a dude. And I thought about it, I was like, fuck it, I made Nathan Explosion. <laughs> Because <laughs> it makes oh, sense, yeah, the, 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 you know, uh, Death Clock are fucking corporate, <laughs> dude. For to, real, dude. To like an extreme level. <laughs> I, I love, 
uh, Mike Pondsmith, creator of the Cyberpunk tabletop RPG. I loved his cameo in that game. Like, dude, that guy's got a voice that makes Barry White seem like pussy repellent. Uh, yeah. Dude, like, for real, man. Like, I ain't gay, but uh, I don't know if he asked nice enough. <laughs> uh, he did the voice of uh, Deshaun, didn't he? No, uh, no, no, no. Uh, he only has, like, a little cameo. Uh, and he, uh, I, I don't want to spoil it for people, but he's a ripper doc, but not one of the street vendors. Um, he's in one of the story sections, and he's just got this deep baritone voice that is just like, dude, I, I wish I had that voice, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I got it. Also, uh, I have a form up. I have uh, the Series X Xbox. Okay. Um, but I also got it for my, yeah, my laptop, which I'm using right now. I mean, uh, and it's a gaming laptop. And when I originally got the game on there, man, it was, it was fucking chugging, man. It was just like, uh, uh, that was like maybe getting like maybe 16 frames. <laughs> well, but they I'll really did. You know, they kind of pulled um, like an EverQuest 2, almost pulled an EverQuest 2, right? EverQuest 2 was a lot like Star Citizen in the regards that it was designed for next-gen systems. Yeah. And it's like, dude, it's it's one thing to, to want to appeal to uh, next-gen systems, but your average person, their computer's a few years old. Yeah. Um, you got to make sure that it runs smoothly on that. Well, I don't know what the I don't know what they did if they had some uh some kickass uh optimization uh patch or something because now it yeah. runs like fucking butter, man. Like melted fucking butter. I'm like, where the fuck did this come from? What the hell? No. <laughs> it, it, and that's exactly what it is. Now, CD Projekt Red was smart, dude. They hired a bunch of people from the mod community who had come up with a bunch of fixes. And um, they they threw money at them uh, to incorporate those fixes into their game. And it's just, like, extra smart. Extra smart. Um, and that's something that Squad... Uh, the developers of Kerbal Space Program did for Kerbal Space Program 2. Uh, even though I've heard that that's like delayed again because it's still just not ready yet. Right. And uh, I, I know, you know, uh, CD Projekt Red, dude, they, they, they should. It would have been better. And yes, they would have taken a hit on their stock price. But it would have been better if they just like were like, dude, it's just not ready yet. Yeah. Um, because it, uh, it, it's same thing with the crew with No Man's Sky. Now, now, No Man's Sky is absolutely fucking amazing. Now, that's what I hear. I played it back in the day, yeah. and um, I, I was grossly unimpressed. But uh, now I hear that it's really awesome. And uh, well, one, I just can't afford it. It's just not fiscally responsible. But two, um. I just don't have the time to play games, you know. Uh, quick question: Do you have Xbox? Uh, no, I I am uh, part of the PC Master Race. Okay, uh, actually, they may have it for their PC Game Pass, where you know you could, you know, uh, Xbox Xboxes Xboxes and uh, Microsoft's uh, subscription service. Oh, okay. Um. Because with the game, with the Xbox Game Pass, I got it for free. Oh, cool! Yeah, I I use uh like uh, I often check like uh, I use Opera GX because it's specifically optimized for uh, gaming. Right. And um, uh, uh, I, I and I, I and I absolutely love that. I, I love that it's uh, optimized for gaming. Um, and on top of that, you get like these little, every week they update it with games that are free. And they, they also point out, you know, stuff that's on game pass and, and, and the like too. Um, 
Gosh, inking takes a minute, doesn't it? All right, give me a moment. Let me go. I am going to see what games they have available for the P. It's uh, it's Microsoft's PC Game Pass. So okay, I usually just get the uh, get get the the all in all in one uh, uh -huh. because like I I have an X. Uh, Microsoft has it's not a, like an Xbox emulator. It's just basically a portal um, because Xbox does run off of Windows. Uh, people don't know it, but it is a DOS system. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and for that, I have Minecraft on there because I've got like, uh, I mean, I don't have it up and running right now, but I've got a server normally, like when I can afford it, I've got a server for Minecraft, Minecraft uh, uh, Bedrock Addiction edition, uh, uh, for, for the kids, for the family. Uh, and they can't wait. But, you know, our Xbox is dead, too. Uh, it had strong, healthy bones, though, I can tell you that, because uh, it, it had uh, so much milk over the years, and that the amount of abuse that that Xbox took and still ran, um, that has made me a, 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 an Xbox uh, uh, customer for life. Uh, I mean, dude, like the DVD player didn't work because it uh, apparently one of the kids wanted to watch the peanut butter jelly moving. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, hold, yeah on on hold on that thought. Hold on that thought. I'll be right back. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, good. These, these Sharpies, I like them, but uh, sometimes the nib becomes disconnected. And that's just a little... It's a little annoying. Uh, it's a little annoying there. But then again, you know, buy them in a box. Get a whole bunch of them. Uh, Sharpie changed his recipe, too. Um, uh, I've noticed that uh, there's a little more consistency between their different pens. Um, he used to use, like, different inks for all their different pens and stuff. But it seems like they're unifying the ink. Um, although I haven't been able to find the Sharpie Deluxe recently, so, but I, then again, I haven't checked Amazon. I'll check, uh, Blix again and see if they got them in stock. I love the Sharpie Deluxe because it's archival quality. Uh, and yeah, it costs like a lot, uh, in comparison to like a regular Sharpie, but uh, maybe like 60% more, but I mean, yeah. dude, it's Sharpie, but archival quality. Uh, like, how can you argue with that? There we go. <laughs> All right. Drain the lizard. But, uh, Drain it. But, okay, yeah. Uh, so, No Man's Sky is available on PC Game Pass. Oh, okay, cool. So, uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, they just came out with a, even more updates just recently. So, Basically, everything with No Man's Sky now, you know, you have your actual player, character avatars now. You can actually meet up with friends and all that kind of stuff. Uh, now you have you can tame animals, and you'll have your mounts. You have your you have now you can get a fucking exosuit uh, car and all that, a submarine, build your bases. Oh, so cool. Uh, you can have your own. You can buy a freighter and a bunch of frigates, so you can have them go out on explorations and stuff to get you more money. Um, they just re uh, fairly recently introduced organic ships. Ooh! So you get yourself a organic ship and uh, organic uh, organic frigates as part of your fleet. Uh, oh, that's along cool. Along with your freighter, you can also have your own fleet of fighters. You know, you can you can hire other aliens. So whenever you're you end up in a firefight, these guys will teleport out of nowhere and start aiding you. Nice. Damn. Uh, there we go. And then recently, they just added uh, basically external, basically I want to say external customizations for your freighter. 
where you're basically expanding out more of your base. Like right now on one of my on my freighter, I basically have a fucking sun deck out there. <laughs> oh, that's cool. See, I love I love a good sandbox game. Um, I really do. I love a good sandbox game. Um, like I'm I'm currently building something to uh, for when I do get my my bedrock servers back up and running because uh, I like to keep a public server. I've got a scenario, uh, and I'm gonna do a I'm gonna run it for a hundred days, and uh, then uh, well after the hundred days is up. I'll make a, a world download available for it, uh, but uh, where it's like I, I'm I'm in creative mode right now, building a crashed colony ship, and so like the players are going to have tons of awesome resources available, right, to go ahead and get out there and start. Are they going to repeat? And I'm I'm putting in like redstone, and uh, for those who understand what that is. Um, I'm putting in a bunch of like redstone uh, to uh, and me mechanics and whatnot. So like, like the the immediate spawn area, um, like I'm trying to figure out other than putting like no collision blocks, which means that I would just have to make everything bigger. You know what I mean? So that the people can't destroy it. But I also want to leave option the option of you know, maybe the players decide, well, hey, uh, it doesn't matter if the ship's got everything that we need. Um, let's tear it apart and use it to build new society, right? Which right. That, that would be a great idea as well. I don't know exactly how it's going to go. So, but I put in redstone contraptions uh, in it so that way... Um, if people wanted to, they could restore the functionality of the ship and it would have like auto farms, uh, um, what do you get? XP, uh, farms and, and a whole bunch of other stuff that all they have to do is, uh, restore power. And then to do that, you just got to go find the right bits and, uh, and, and put them in the, uh, and, and put them in the right, uh, you know, little containers and whatnot. Uh, and then just, uh, you know, technical side of things, it would, uh, uh, what do you call it? It would, um, gosh, dang it. I'm blanking on the term here. Uh, let's see here. Let's get that back up there. That's what it's so far. I'm taking this. I'm going to let my hand rest for a minute. Ever, I don't know if y'all can <laughs> see that but i've got like this lightning scar on the top of my hand that's where a uh, pit bull decided it was going to use my hand as a chew toy uh, some years back and i had to relearn how to draw Fun. It, gets a little, it gets a little sore but uh you know then then i listen to papa titus and you know what papa titus says right don't be a wussy <laughs> Don't uh, be a wuss. That's a that was a great show. Oh yeah, no, I I really enjoyed uh, Christopher Tice's uh, stories about his terrible father, who's not so terrible but absolutely awful. Uh, <laughs> well, there's something that's fucked up. So what's that? Uh, did you ever see pictures of his actual dad? No. He looks exactly like Stacy Keach, the actor who played as him. Oh, dude, that is cool, dude. Stacy Stacy Keach, man, that guy. I I've been a fan. Of, I was a fan of his since I was little, uh, and I was like, dude, like talk. You know, it's the boy named Sue, dude. Mm -hmm. Um, of course he's badass. <laughs> <laughs> Was I, I actually what one thing I'm a fan of was his uh, voice work in Mask of the Phantasm. Yes, because he did do he he was the voice of the Phantasm in that uh, movie. Mm-hmm. So, and, and which is funny because that's how I always pictured Ghost Rider sounding in my head whenever I'd read the comics as a kid. 
Right. But then Nicolas Cage kind of turned me over to his style. So <laughs> as god awful as those movies were, Nicolas Cage was great. <laughs> You know, I've actually never seen the Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider movies. All right. Uh, uh, they're, so they're both pretty bad, especially when you can tell that they literally dumped all their budget into the CG of Ghost Rider himself, which is fucking phenomenal, even for uh, late 2000 stand or yeah, late 2000 standards, because that what came out in what. Uh, 2005, 2006, something like that. Yeah, no, the um, special effects look good. Um, but the problem is, is that that's where they dumped all their money in. the uh, The characters, like the villains, look like absolute ass. That's like, unfortunate. Like sci-fi, I want to say almost sci-fi channel uh, level of ass. Oh, <laughs> dude, no. And that, on top of that, you know, the design, uh, Blackheart's design was absolutely fucking stupid. I mean, he never, he never once got to see him in fucking, you know, his comic book more comic book accurate beast look. You know what I mean? Oh, that's a shame, dude. Because that was like one of my favorite moments from like the uh, X Men versus like the, the Marvel versus Capcom. Yeah, you know. It was 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 dark heart dude that guy was so much fun to play uh but it was, it was great uh, uh oh and they also dumped the budget into uh uh caretakers uh yeah sam, sam elliott's ghost rider form oh cool so yeah he he looked phenomenal hit the horse looked badass <laughs> Good, uh, as well he should, you know. Now, the story itself was fairly dog shit. What, what's his name? Uh, Peter Fonda, he did. He, pulled, he was a great uh, Mephisto. Okay, Peter Fonda, huh? Yeah, he, dude, I could see him as Mephisto, yeah. But they, they ended up getting a different actor. Uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Cillian Hines, I think that's his name. He I'm not as, familiar with that. He played as Mephisto in the second movie. But Aww. I hate it when they switch up actors. Yeah, well the first movie didn't do so well, so there's a reason why Peter Fonda didn't want to come back for that. No, that's and that's fair. But the second movie Alright, so the second movie is even worse dog shit, but the special effects on Ghost Rider and what he, the, some of the crazy shit that he does in that was fucking off the rails. Like, uh, so, you know, obviously he has his motorcycle and stuff, but there's, there's this one point where they get into, where he's in a battle with a bunch of these guys and a quarry. And you know, those giant, those giant, uh, those giant quarry machines, they're basically, it's like a big giant saw. With buckets on oh, it. Oh yeah! He ends up getting one of those, and fucking ghost, and ghost rider defies that thing. Where it's like nope. fucking rolling flames and shit. He's just fucking destroying shit with it. But he's fight Ghost Rider's going fucking. You know, Nicholas Cage is fucking going ham with this shit. Fucking, he's just laughing his fucking ass off and shit. <laughs> oh, dude. But it, 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 even though that movie itself was like absolutely terrible, they actually do go more into the mythos of the uh, of uh, what, uh, what, uh, Xanatos. Is that his name? The demon that uh, yeah, the the demon that uh, John uh, Johnny Blaze pretty much uh, harnesses the power from. Oh, okay. And yeah, I always, I always forget that. Even though I used to read Ghost Rider like all the time, especially when uh, 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 back in the like the Midnight Suns era, yeah. where they had that uh, whiny 
whiny, bitchy Danny as Ghost Rider. I I liked Danny Ketch Ghost Rider more than Johnny Blaze, mainly just on the mainly because of the aesthetics. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. I, I just felt he was a bit whiny after a while. Like it's like, all right, dude, I, I got it, I got it. Yeah, life, life is terrible, but holy and moly, that's, a, yeah. that's actually the design I like because they went with the Danny Ketch design with the first movie. Yeah, I noticed that, and I really enjoyed it too. Um, and his bike was badass. You know, that thing was just a monster chopper, man. I mean. Oh, for real. But in the second movie, they gave him more of a uh, oh, sport bike. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I got to go handle something domestically. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Okay. I, I, I had to uh, I had to give the wife some cash. Uh, <laughs> you had to give her some hush money. Leave me alone. I'm streaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, she she was like super, you know, she's she understands. She she gets it. Um She gets it. All right. I think this is starting to turn out pretty decent looking here. I think uh, yeah. after I lay in some more base lines, I'm going to go ahead and just take an eraser to it and get these pencils out of my way so they're not – the lighting in, in the in, in the basement is, is not the best, you know? Right. It's it's just not the best down here. Uh, I'm working on that though. Uh, like all all my lighting is uh, is in a storage unit in in Arizona right now. Um, we ha we kind of had to drop a bunch of stuff when the RV died, and we ended up having to rent a uh, rent a vehicle big enough to hold my the, my family uh, and all the pets. And what was absolutely essential, uh, and uh, let me tell you, man, the renting of that vehicle, we could have bought another RV um, with, uh, with that money, to be honest. Like, that was outrageously expensive. Like, when, when, the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the bill came for that... Holy smokes. Like that, that just I about had a heart attack. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, oh, no, 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 no. That's more than what we paid for that RV. Oh, dude. And uh, I, I don't know. I think the wife sold the RV today. Hopefully she did. Hopefully the guy bought it. And uh, let me tell you. Not for very much money, but uh, it's better than paying storage on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's dead weight. It's dead weight. Fuck that storage shit. No, for real, dude. And I still got to do a trip back out west to go get all that stuff. Um, like the the kids are patient and understanding, which is unusual for children. Um, but. Uh, you know, but partially because they were there uh, for the nonsense that ensued, right? Like, dude, that <laughs> that RV, that fucking RV, that RV. Okay, I need to re. You know, I'm not going to repencil it. We're just going to. We're just going to re-angle the whole thing and do it raw. Fuck it, do it raw. 
<laughs> Fuck it, we're doing it wrong. No, please, God, no. Lou, please. Oh, yeah. All right. I think I'm almost there. I'm just going to throw down some bass lines for this. And... Yeah. Get some bass lines in on that and get rid of these ugly pencils so that I can uh, get to the, the good stuff here. The detailing and whatnot and that. And the pencils are getting all smudged and everything. Oh, you know what game I can't wait for? What's that? Have you heard of a game coming out called Scorn? I have seen a little bit here and there about it, but I don't know enough to have an opinion. All right, so apparently this game, it, it's from what I understand, it's like it's a sci-fi horror. Mm -hmm. And Everything, like literally everything, is based off of H.R. Geiger's uh, style. Oh, dude! And even even your character, he, I mean, like you see, like some of the weird biomechanical looking shit in his arms and stuff. It's supposed to, it's like a first person shooter, but it's not a shooter at the same time. It's more you know more horror based and puzzle solving and stuff. Um. Dude, I'm going to have so many hidden penises on my character and vaginas. And it's even, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And even the, the guns that you get are organic guns. Like to oh, change, that's kind of cool. Change out, the, change out from a pistol to a, to like a shotgun. Uh, he detaches the barrel from the grip, and it's like this weird fucking tendril, fucking bloody muscly shit. And it loads on the shotgun piece. <laughs> Dude, that's cool. But, yeah, it, it's and, uh, and that game was pretty much like the sole reason on why I got the Xbox. Because it's going to be an Xbox exclusive. Oh. oh yeah. and, it, and it's also coming to PC, but, yeah. You know. Well, good, good. I'm glad to hear that it's coming to PC. Okay, we'll give that a, a second for the ink to set. Sharpie from, drives quickly. What, from what I understand, it's going to be free to play through Game Pass. Oh. So, but I'm still going to buy because I, I yes, I uh, with my Xbox, I do have a bunch of digital copies through Game Pass. But yeah. those are game. Those are games I'm never going to really buy physically. Uh, right. The only game. The only game I have that it, I have physically is uh, for my Xbox is uh, Cyberpunk. Yeah. Yeah. But, no. Uh, you ever watch uh, some ordinary gamers? I think uh, I think I've seen them a couple times. That's yeah. it's Mudahar. Yeah. He goes, "It's me, Mudahar." Uh, right, right, right. Yeah, dude, uh, I I love his advice. Like, get it physical whenever you can, yeah. because they can always just take. Because when you're when you're when you get a digital edition of a game, you don't own it. You're just renting it. You just rented it until they're they're done supporting it. Yeah, that's starting to come out good. All right, good, good, good. Uh, I'm happy. Let me get some some edging in on here because I'm going to come at it with the big old Sharpie and that thing gets messy. Dude, I had somebody get upset because they paid me a little something something for, for a sketch, right? And uh, they, they weren't like genuinely angry or anything of the sort, but they were just like, dude, how come you charge you know, so much for this sketch. And it was like, I, 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 I knocked it out pretty fast and they absolutely loved it. Like everybody was like, Ooh, ah, ye, you know, 
Uh, but at the same time, they were like, uh, I was like, dude, I, I just got to tell you the thing that, you know, that, that all artists got to say, you're not paying me for my time. You're paying me for the time it took me to learn to do it that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead and take a gander real quick. Oh, hold on one second. Dude, that is brutal. Oh, dude, I love some good bar. We got to show World War Hell Dan that. Like, he loves bio horror. Uh, and he's got a decent gaming rig. So, yeah, he'll, he'll probably want to get in on that. For real. Uh, now, mind you, this this is purely an independent company that's making this. So, Dude, I can only get so hard, okay? <laughs> well, I'll... Uh, this game was delayed a couple times from what I can remember, which That's is okay. fine. I want them to actually release a finished product and not pull a fucking, what the fuck was that uh, Agony? Oh, I heard about that one. I never even seen it, but I, I heard that uh, it came out like not done. That and there's like a lot of promises that they pulled and whatnot, but especially when they're like, "Oh yeah, we'll send you the X-rated version of this game," and then like they kind of like not in, until they were pressured into finally releasing it. <laughs> oh come on, that's cheap. Yeah, yeah, blocking, yeah, getting all that, uh, all those pencils out of the way really is helping me see the picture here. And one more. Oh. Let's see here. Dude, that is so cool. That is so cool. Dude, I, yeah. I, I need it so bad. Um, yeah, same here. I was, remember when I, first, when I saw the first trailer, I was like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is it? Oh, and I've been following, following it hardcore since. So then when they said, uh, I think it, it was originally supposed to come out on the Xbox, uh, which system was that the xbox xbox s series x or whatever the you know the one that they had a couple years ago oh, okay but then uh they ended up delaying it they're like no we're actually just going to go ahead and wait for the next gen system which is a smart move yeah, no, that's 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 a good move. You know, if your game's going to be a couple years out, you might as well uh, just just wait for the next gen system, and you know, make sure that it's reverse compatible. Though, I'm just going to say, uh, a lot of people, you know, they 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 want to they 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 don't want to have to upgrade their system just to play a game. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why I went with the Series X too is because you know it has the CD drive. So yes, yes. So that way no, I you... can have my physical copies. Now my friend he got the Series S because he's doesn't really care about physical copies. He's, uh, he he's like a literal he is a literal video game addict. He'll even play some of the dog. He'll play the dog shit stuff too. <laughs> Oh, dude, I have fun playing some indie titles. Like, there are some real oddball games out there. Like, if you want an adventure in weird, um, how fish is made. <laughs> uh, I take it you played it? <laughs> no, but it kind of uh, sounds like Sea Man. Dude, it is, it is really, really weird. Um, it, it is a weird, weird game. Um, and I do recommend it though, because it's kind of cool. 
Um, but it's it's just extra oddball, you know. What's it really that, is. What's one game that I really enjoyed was uh, the game Carrying that came out a couple years ago. That sixteen bit looking game. Huh. Yeah, you you're basically the thing. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so yeah, you go go around as this fucked up alien parasite thing, friggin' just trying to escape from wherever you were being held from. Gosh, her her foot is like you know, I could probably nah, too many weird tangents on that. Put my little tank ferret. That's right. It actually says tank ferret. There we go. Now let's put this back where the audience can see it. See right there. What do you think, man? Not bad for a quick little doodle. Loving it. Very 90s. Nice. Just something quick. Let the line art, let the line weight kind of sing for itself. Let that set for a second and come back over with the uh, with the white and kind of Reach into it a little bit, do a little bit of uh, what's that guy's name? Frank Miller. Mm -hmm. Do some back, some back cut-ins and whatnot. Just don't do lazy Frank Miller. Yeah, no, I'm talking Frank Miller when he was still hungry. Um, like Sin City, early Sin City, uh, Batman. Uh not Return of the Dark Knight Part 2. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, no, dude. Dark Knight Returns was great. And it was a great one-shot. Um, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And honestly, I even liked like the animated version. I, I enjoyed it, even though it did depart from the, the comic. And I was Peter like... Peter Weller was, was fucking great. <laughs> dude, Peter Weller... That guy is such a damn good actor. Um, and, you know, people are like, oh, he's a prick, though. And I'm like, that's, yeah, okay. He's not here to be your friend. He's here to act, dude. Uh, <laughs> you know? Uh, I always thought he was a nice guy. Oh, well. Yeah, no, I have, I, you know, uh, me too. From the one time that I met him, uh, he was nice. There we go. Clean that up a little or, bit. Excuse me. I should say Dr. Peter Weller. Yes, Dr. Peter Weller. That's right. Uh, he's one of those guys that surprises you with his PhD. Well, his is in uh, art history and all that stuff. So. Yeah. No. And. Uh, huh. What uh, do you know? Some, ever... Someone. Someone who got an art degree, but also had a backup plan in something that makes them money. Huh. <laughs> right. Crazy talk. There we go. A little more definition to that hair. And I think color would really make this one sing. You know what I mean? Like, when I remember earlier we were talking about, like, you know, um, like finding a balance between black and white and, and color. And uh, I don't know. This is this is just a prototype. We'll hash it out a little further. You know, we'll uh, we'll we'll develop the style for the internal of the book, uh, so that way you know, the audience has like a, a good, comprehensive style that's that's going to look good in black and white. It's going to look phenomenal in color. Um, because this is going to be like how many pages is it again? 57. 57 pages, full color. Uh, are you writing it? Like the lettering? 
No, uh, the script, just the uh, the comic script. Yeah, uh, I sent you the script. Okay. Oh, I was just wondering if you wrote that or if you hired a writer. That's, I was just. Curious. Oh no, I wrote that. I use a uh, script software. Nice, nice. Uh, I'm gonna take a picture of this with my cell phone telephone. Uh, unfortunately, to do that, it's gonna kick me out of Streamyard. Um. So I'm gonna jump. Have the link. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna jump out and I'm gonna jump right back in. Uh, but here we go. There you go, folks. It's all sideways now. But uh, here, let me. Uh, eh, you can see my ugly basement. But there we go. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit more. Hold the camera stable. On. But uh, yeah. All right. So I will be right back. After all these right. messages. After these messages. Oh, shit. While we wait, for those of you still here, how y'all doing?
welcome back. Ah, yes, thank you. So I posted it to the twatters. It is up on the twatters. I took a picture, unfortunately, uh, because I am on my phone. I really can't properly screen share, but uh, it's the latest post on my Twitters. If you want to grab that and show off to everybody, because that's much better than my video feed, <laughs> you know. Right. And I ran it through a black and white. Normally, I, I wait till like the good mid afternoon uh, where the sun's not directly overhead. So that way, but it's still, you know, like either it's a couple hours before noon or a couple of hours afternoon but not too early or too late because then it, in the morning it's blue, the lights blue shifted in the evening the lights red shifted. So mm. it kind of annoys the hell out of me sometimes because I'm trying to take a black and white photo. Uh, right. And uh, both of those uh, are, are not friendly for values, but uh, yeah, I try to like, and plus with that, you know, then my, my, my dumpy little cell phone camera can actually take, like, actually get good resolution on it. Uh, but, yeah, that is, that's that on that one, man. Uh, if you can grab that and screen share it for the audience. And uh, we'll see. I got a little bit of clout today. It was nice. A little bit of clout. Uh, I drew up a, a, that picture of Cyber Frog I did. People are enjoying it. And uh, they're like, dude, you actually did the leg stuff. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, I did the leg stuff. I thought that was a character detail. No, I didn't say it like that. Uh, I was like, yeah, no, it, it was, he was fun to draw. Uh, like, yeah. Once I actually like sat down, I actually looked at it. There we go. Yeah. Fucking looking awesome. Yeah, Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, that back arm's a little small now that I see it. But it's all right. You know, this is just a, just a quickie. Just a quickie. Gotta, I'm, I'm going to be drawing a lot of this character. So I'm going to draw her, <laughs> draw her a whole bunch of different ways. We'll figure out like a final inking style, final penciling style, you know, uh, and get it stylistically worked out. We've got a little bit of time. To do to work on the pre-production, you know. Uh, I, you've got fantastic reference art from fantastic artists. Uh, just absolutely, just awesome stuff, man. Um, but it, like, did you get uh, Howell Alan Alonso? Didn't he do a piece for you? I don't. No, so, not him. No. Gosh, um, I'm trying to think. Who did the one where she's like, like got her hands on the table and she's just like, oh, dude, she's uh, delusional, delusional. Give me a moment. Give me a moment. Do, 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 do. I, I love that picture. Uh, delusional X. Okay. That's uh, D L or D delusional. Oh, okay. X on the Twitters. I think I have them. If not, I should. I do. Twitter unfollowed me from a bunch of people. YouTube unsubbed me from a bunch of people, and it's like, dude, I thought they just stopped putting out content, and I go check on their channel. And I'm because I'm a little, you know, I'm a little concerned. I'm like, dude, please tell me you're not stopping the the, the, the stuff, you know. Uh, and uh, no, no, they're still putting out content. Just you know, the the evil overlords of of the mass media decided that uh, it, that they were just gonna like snub the channel or something like that. They and they do that, like uh, they do that through, uh, with indies a lot. And they call it a bot sweep. And it's like, dude, you're not sweeping for bots. Otherwise, you know, a lot of those big channels would lose hundreds of thousands of subs. I'm just saying. Um, you know, 
Because <laughs> they got tons of bot subs on there. Yeah. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would definitely just wanted to kind of come out, kind of hang out. Thank you for uh, lending me your platform. Uh, you know, draw some neon revenant tonight. Yeah, it's and, no problem. Uh, uh, one thing, I, so what? There's only limited time, limited times that you can uh, do this with yeah. the StreamYard, or did you have yeah, that, so? For free, they give you 20 hours of streaming a month. All right. Uh, so that's why I still have it. <laughs> right. They give you 20 hours of streaming a month. Uh, and their base plan is like 25 bucks and it's totally worth it. It's totally worth it. But unfortunately, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in the poor house at the moment. I'm, I'm still recovering from this move. So I got to hustle. Uh, mm -hmm. I got to get products out. I, I got to deliver. Um, I've got another piece coming out for, uh, for, for Chris Brown, the creator of Slaughterville. Um, and dude, this one's going to be a doozy. I very rarely get to do gore porn and I get to do <laughs> some gore porn like this. Thing, this is disgusting. And it's an homage, uh, to, to a Rob Zombie classic. And that's all I can really say on the matter right there. But, um, I am, I'm super stoked to do this picture. Uh, Chris and I were talking about what kind of art style we want to go with for that. Uh, he likes that, uh, the, my, my, my illustrative, like, uh, pen and ink style. So we're going to go with that. Um, and that's kind of like inspired by, uh, oh gosh, dang it. I'm blanking on names on the, uh, like, you know, like Rockefort and, and Barry Windsor Smith and, uh, uh, Bernie, uh, um, God, what's his name? Starts with the W. Did the Frankenstein like one of my like illustratively probably my favorite comic? I've never read that the Bernie Wrightson, uh, his Frankenstein, but I've all, I've only seen like illustrations from it. I'm like, dude, these are masterful, masterful. Um, dude, I, so he wants to get he wants to go with that like that style of art, and I'm like, oh yeah, dude, no, for real. Uh, I, I, that that's it's fun. It's time consuming, but it is a fun art style. Just draw it like that. That right there, like to do like that, and to do like say that this picture in that style yeah. uh, would take like twice as long, easily. Um, mostly because I'm literally drawing thousands of tiny little lines. <laughs> Like that that succubus picture that uh, some of y'all out there has seen, um, yeah that 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 took that succubus picture took like a solid ten hours. That, that took it like a solid ten hours, and that's on nine by twelve. Um, and uh, I ended up kind of like rushing it towards the end, or I was just like, dude, I'm spending too much time for how much I got paid. I'm spending too much time on this. I, I gotta, I just gotta get it done, <laughs> but keep it good, you know. Keep, 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 keep it good because uh, you know the whole point of of people spending money on me to hire me to be an artist is to go make them more money, right? Right. And uh, I aim to deliver. I mean, most of most of my art career has been spent doing commercial art or behind the scenes. Um, like concept design or uh, mostly storyboards, so many storyboards. Um, I've, I've been a part of like the storyboard uh, slave crew uh, on, on a few different uh, Purda Hollywood productions, but you know, subcontracted by a subcontractor. So your name doesn't go in, you know, it's like storyboards done by this studio. And it's like, yeah, this that studio who, uh, who, uh, who hired out a bunch of independent contractors like me, <laughs> you know, uh, it's hilarious. But I had fun tonight, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's no problem, man. Friggin', 
like I said, I don't get to do this very often. Like the mo- most streaming I ever do is usually I'm with uh, Red Valkyrie on Fridays, and you know, bullshit with them, get into shenanigans, and you know, saying shit that you know has them questioning them uh, on why they allowed me in. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you should. See, uh, see this. See if uh, you can get me an invite this Friday. I would love to hang out with Red Valkyrie. Well, she, uh, 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 she's absolutely Friday. fantastic, and uh, honestly, Friday. like, I was just going to say, every Friday uh, they'll stream uh, Regen, but uh, I could. I'll talk to them. They're, I, I believe they're more than happy to bring you on to as like part of like an. Ar- uh, because you know the first half hour of their show, you know it's their paid members, which I'm one of them. But then after that, they uh, let anyone that's in the chat uh, jump in. So, oh, cool. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You know, Fridays. What do I usually do on Fridays? I don't know. I don't usually do anything on Fridays anymore. Um. Due to the fact that I was pretty much out of the loop for months, and I've been, I do, I've been wanting to go hang out with, with Valkyrie for a while, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they, they'd be more than happy to hear from you. I mean, they seem to like you, so I don't see why not. <laughs> yeah, we seem to get along, uh, and I, dude, uh, I, I, I love the cosplays. Uh, that oh, stuff yeah. is just, that's just so much fun. Uh, like <laughs> Chrometa, I love the Chrometa cosplay. That was just too much fun. Uh, oh, you're going to be seeing me uh, on Revenant cosplay. Anybody better, to be honest. Uh, like, dude, I want to see you walking around. Still there? Sorry, I had to. I had to walk away. My wife was playing something on the phone. You there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Am I here? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. That's the, okay. Okay. Good. Apparently, I found a dead zone in my yard. Um, Yay! Phone, and I didn't want to get your channel in trouble. No, it's all good. Because I'm uh, out on the back porch. Well, now I'm out in the backyard, kind of chilling. I love the fact that I don't have a fence. It's all open. Most of my neighbors don't have fences. Um, I, I love that, dude. Like, I, I've met more neighbors here in three months than I did in five years, in the last five years of living in Los Angeles, or four years of living in LA. For real. Uh, I absolutely love it. They're actually human beings, uh, and they communicate, and they don't just like sit there and like name drop uh, every five minutes to seem important. Hey, like I don't know what it is. Like in Los Angeles, everybody name drops, and I'm like, dude, unless you're smooth schmoozing at an industry get together, there's no point. <laughs> There's no point to name dropping. Um, <laughs> like, for real. Uh, and then at that point, if you are schmoozing at a Hollywood to get together, then you got to name drop, dude. You, you got it. You got to point out your connections. You got to use play six degrees of Kevin Bacon. You know what I mean? It's a uh, stupid game, but yeah. it is. It is what it is. Like, me, I. I, I love living out in the booties, so. <laughs> See, I, 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 the town I live in, in Macomb, it's, it's, it's small town, but there's, uh, the University of Western Illinois is here. And so, seasonally, it's a small city. Uh, but during the summer and during the dead of winter, apparently, uh, it, it gets pretty quiet, but, uh, during the spring and fall, when school are in, when school is in, uh, it gets busy out here, and 
um, I'm trying to garner a hundred thousand dollars so I can buy this. Uh, essentially, it's a brownstone, uh, is what it is, and um, it's got two rental properties, which I don't care uh, about. That I mean, that's that's kind of a hassle for me, uh, to be honest. But what I'm really interested in is the storefront because this is a college town and there's no nerd store. Like there's, there's one nerd store, but it's one of those places where old toys go to die, you know, where you, 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 I, you, you get something for your parents. Uh, if you're a college kid, you know, you get something for your parents because, Oh yeah, my parents loved He-Man when they were a kid. Uh, I'm going to buy them a He-Man figure or a G.I. Joe or something, you know, and it's just like, ugh. and the guy who runs it is 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 a real miser. Um, it's got like security cameras. He's always calling the, uh, the the person at the register and they just they seem exasperated. <laughs> that poor young lady behind the counter, man, she was just like, oh, my God, he's always watching. And it's like, well, yeah, dude, like he, he's got a bunch of stuff he perceives as valuable because, you know, that toy might get a good price on eBay. But that toy that's up in the shelf is not the condition that you spend the big money on eBay for. Um, it's kind of disappointing. And they had a comic book store, but they went under because they were one of those places that, you know, stank of newsprint and body odor. And was crammed full of long boxes. There, there really wasn't much of anything there. And I'm like, no, no, no. no. When, when you're, when you're doing a, a modern nerd boutique, we'll call it. Um, you want to have nice open areas. You want the product lining the wall, but you don't want it too cluttered. You want plenty of, uh, uh, you want a good amount of flare, but you don't want to block out your windows. All these places block out their windows, and it's because their store looks like a warehouse on the inside. It doesn't, it doesn't look good. Right. And so right now I'm putting together cause my, my credit's not totally ruined at this point. Uh, only kind of, but it's still good enough, but uh, I'm putting together like a loan proposal. Um, and I'm going to shop around at some of the local, uh, uh, what do you call those places? Um, uh, credit union. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and see if I can, you know, swing 150, uh, maybe 200 K, uh, which that's, that's a sizable, that, that's, that's nothing to, 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 to scoff at. That's a, that's a sizable loan for somebody small like me. Um, or if I can get, uh, a couple of these other avenues of financing together with tank where it presents, and then we have a storefront. Then we have a front. And you know what I'm going to do? Like, if I get a store together, I am going to load those shelves with retail copies of my favorite indie books. Uh, or just, you know, good indie books. Um, because that's I, that's what I want. I, I want this stuff to get out to the general masses. I want this to get out to the public. Uh, in 10 to 20 years... Uh, I want this stuff to be like Judge Dredd. I want it to be mainstream. I want the average person to go, oh, yeah, I know who Judge Dredd is. Uh, I know who Cyber Frog is. Oh, Graveyard Shift. Yeah, no, I, I love that Netflix series. Uh, I never read the comic, though. You know, I want to hear that. Um, I, I want to see it happen. I want to see these people succeed, man. You know, I, I, want, a, I want an ISM animated series. I could totally see that animated. Tell you um, what, man. As soon as Superman comes into fucking uh, public domain, I'm going to be writing the shit out of that. Oh, dude, 2026, Conan. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> shoot, for real. Some sword uh, and sorcery is going to be going down. <laughs> shit, what? Uh, when did... Let me... Give me a second before you up and disappear. Uh, sure. Phantom, when did... Oh, the, the 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 Phantom. Um, yeah, when did when was that Purple Suit part? Phantom? Fuck yeah! Uh, he's he's from um he's from the 1930s. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, he goes up the same year as Conan. 
oh, I'm going to be writing me some fan. Because believe it or not, I actually have some cool ideas, like an uh, idea that's been fucking for the Phantom that's been bouncing around in my head for a long, long time. You, you know that Alex Suvak, who's probably going to want to retire, is going to be just rolling in commissions, naming his price when Phantom oh, yeah. goes public domain. Because he is the definitive Phantom artist. Yeah. I, I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, I, I will die on that hill. Because, like, a, a lot of people, they draw Phantom great. But Suvok just, he's got this aesthetic that's just iconic with the character. Um, and, you know, it's like... I love I love his style. I love his style. It is a classic DC look. Uh, I always like the classic DC look. You know that. Uh, you know, like that. You know, artists like Gil Kane and Murphy Anderson and and whatnot. They, you know, they they kind of helped establish that uh, along with um, gosh, dang it, what's his name? Uh, recently passed away, Teen Titans. Oh, um, you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, one. dude. At Savannah Comic Con, I saw somebody cosplaying as him. <laughs> nice. And it was heartwarming and heartbreaking at the exact same time. George, uh, George something or other. Um, God, I don't know. I'm terrible at names today. <laughs> and things. I'm I'm just all around bad at nouns. <laughs> Welcome to the Tank Ferret is Bad with Nouns show. Uh, yeah. Up next, uh, there's that thing. The the one that does the stuff. <laughs> the stuff. The stuff. You know, the stuff. Well, yeah, things and stuff. And stuff and things. And we stuff things in our stuff and stuff thing and things in our stuff. And, and stuff into our things. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm super stoked for this project. This is going to be a killer book, by the way. This is going to be killer, killer book. Oh, uh, that's the plan. Like, this This is... Uh, this, this is going to be just absolutely just killer kick-ass. Um... And whatnot, and of course we've got to get uh, Neon Revenant added to the CG Mega Collage once I get that back up and running. And uh, I'll be taking that thing on tour. I'm no longer going to be doing it on my channel. Uh, I'm going to go over to other people's channels and go draw their character there <laughs> onto the CG Mega Collage. And of course, you know what's on the CG Mega Collage? Dude, so many things, but most importantly, Krishna Kid, which has been shadow banned. By Indiegogo. They are not promoting it at all. So I I urge everybody out there to please share that campaign. I'm not asking you to back it. I'm asking you to share it. It's free to share the campaign. Make this book happen. Kami Mark, uh, uh, creator of things like uh, Kim Il-sung and Best Korea and Not Daredevil. Uh, which features the original public domain Daredevil. Um, I mean, not Daredevil. Um, uh, you know, he delivers quality products. Dude, one of my favorite books that I bought in 2020 was Best Korea. Uh, and I got the Not Chromium cover, which he jacketed in aluminum foil and wrote on it in permanent marker on the outside. And did an immaculate job. Like I was like, dude, like I it made me wonder if the guy has experience doing book repair because the jacketing for the, the aluminum foil was perfect. No tape, glue, or anything of the sort, perfect folding, perfect lot of creases and everything. Uh I, I can't speak highly enough of, of Kami Mark. Uh he's the only Kami that I really do like. Uh, the only to tolerable commie. That's right. Yeah, we like commie, Mark. See? Um, 
But uh, yeah, no, get the word out. Krishna Kid, it's like Dragon Ball Z meets the Mahabharat and the Bhagavad Gita. Um, like, <laughs> it's, it's so awesome. And it keeps to the source material, too. It's just dialed up to 11, you know? Uh, and it's absolutely fantastic. Is it a little blasphemous? Maybe. But hey, what's a little heresy if, if not fun, right? Um, <laughs> so definitely got to check it out. Um, and I've got, I've got Krishna Kid on the uh, CG Mega Collage along with Chaotic Flux, uh, uh, Shadow Sentry, Canadian Shield, The Company Man. Uh, bad vibes, gun demon, Siamese. Uh, dude, there are so many. I, I, I think I last counted, there were like some like 26 characters on it so far. And I've got the Chrome Tastic collage as well, which has a ton. And that one has like 33 characters on it. Um, to include like Reaper Destroyer, the Badger, uh, Six Gun Gorilla. Um, um, uh, Duty the Alien, uh, a a Alpha Dogs, um, just so many different things. Uh, and it's even got a Fantelican, you know, our, our very own Phantasmagorical. Uh, she is, uh, she's, she's, a, she's officially a canon character as a cybernetic pelican uh, in Artifice Reanimate. And, uh, you know, Fantelican. Oh, and it's got Frog G uh, on that as well. Uh, he's up there at the top slinging wrenches. Uh, it's got so many, so many characters and stuff. Like, it has so many, I can't even remember them all. I actually have to look at the reference sheet uh, to remember all the characters and everything. Because some of, some of the characters, like, when I drew them on there, that was the first time I saw them. Um, that, was, that was my first introduction to the character. And I, I absolutely fell in love with all these books. Uh, they all definitely have a marketplace, and uh, Indie Comics is bringing it, and CG is the spearhead right now. That's the tip of the spear. Uh, it's just cutting away uh, for all these indie books. I mean, like Brian Polito, he's not comics yet, but he exploded about the same time as CG did. Like he was kind of like in the doldrums with Lady Death for a long time, and all of a sudden, boom, he's moving the plot ahead. He's moving the storyline. He's coming out with new characters, La Muerta, uh, you know, the Sugar Skull Hottie. Uh, dude, and I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving what, I, what I'm seeing here. Um, with like Isom and Cyber Frog. Dude, Ethan's working on Rainbow Brute tonight. That's why there was no Kings. Uh, stream and uh, I, I as much as I, I, I hate to hear that somebody's uh, broadcasting schedule has been interrupted I love to hear that Ethan's hard at work on the books um I, I'm super excited uh for Rainbow Brute it's <laughs> it's a joke but it's such a good joke though yeah that's one I can't wait for yeah dude uh I showed the artwork to my kids and it's like, I know this book's not going to be for kids. So, but, uh, they, they absolutely love the idea of rainbow brute. Um, the boys and the girls all loved it. Uh, and, but then again, my, my kids these days are exposed to a lot more stuff than, uh, than we were when we were their age. Um, you know, they, they, nowadays they got creepy pastas and SCPs and and all sorts of stuff. And then, not to mention the predatory videos that you got to watch out for as a parent on YouTube, where it's just like, "Whoa, whoa, what is Spider-Man doing with Elsa? No, oh no, you are not. <laughs> no touches. And, and some of it actually is like straight up like hypnosis." Um, like I, I've studied the subject of hypnosis before and like some of the kids program they got on YouTube, man, that that's like, it's straight up hypno hypnosis. Um, and I'm like, what is the point here? And it's like, it's teaching bad stuff. So 
you know, I, I'm pretty sure Rainbow Brood, as long as the language isn't too extreme, is probably going to be just fine uh, for teenagers and up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. PG-13 ain't PG-13 anymore. It's PG-10. Uh, that's just the way times change, you know? Uh, just PG. <laughs> PG-13 most of these days is just PG. And most stuff that's, uh, as long as it doesn't have too, uh, doesn't have any nudity in it, that's pretty much PG-13 these days. Uh, my kids call me out on when I use cuss words. Um... <laughs> Because uh, dad, dad cusses, uh, especially when he's he's angry about chores not being done, and it just slips out. <laughs> but they That's don't repeat not. that stuff. Nah, no, well, it's dad, great. you're cussing. Be like, you listen here, you little shits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, at that point, I apologize. You know, because I'm not supposed to be doing that. They're calling me out, and that's fine. You know, uh, uh, the you know. Maybe if you got your chores done, there won't be any fucking cursing. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, for real, for real. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to sign off here and go get me some sleep. Um, it is after midnight where I'm at and where you're at. So I think, I think that's good. I think that's good. I think we had some fun tonight. And... Oh, yeah. uh, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we got some people here watching this on the playback. Uh, make sure that uh, you hit that bell to receive all notifications. Smash that like button. Uh, smash it like your like your free pass. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and uh, 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 yeah, <laughs> I think my brain just shut down. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> My brain just said low power. <laughs> all right, then. Well, all right, folks. Well, you can find me on Twitter at KingLake86. Also, jump on Indiegogo. Look for a Rock Hard Comics Presents the Neon Revenant. Plan on launch yes. launching early summer 2023 with yours truly uh, writing and good old, t good old Tank Ferret over here, the Panzer Marmot. He will be. Doing uh -huh, all uh -huh. the art. Um, and with that, you want to go ahead and, well, you just shield yourself like a shitload. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, the only thing I said didn't say is where you can find me, and that's at Tank Ferret Art on the Twitter. Um, and, uh, dude, you can't, can't forget the incomparable Red Valkyrie as the first line of defense for the consumer. She's going to be editing this book. And yep. uh, she does phenomenal work, man. Um, I heard Allie uh, Sanguis uh, just had been coming out, just editing. Alduis on the Farm is another great editor right there. Mm -hmm. You know, so, hey, folks out there with your projects, get editors. They're everywhere, man. <laughs> just remember, you got to spend money and make money, guys. All right? It's true. And You're investing. All right, so this is where we kill it. Y'all have right. a lovely day. Charlie Mike until until Mike Charlie. Yeah, sure, we'll go with that. <laughs>